Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we do have quite a bit to get through. I've got a strong and powerful low pressure area that's going to be developing offshore from New South Wales, and that's going to be classifiable as an East Coast low most likely, and that's going to be bringing hazardous weather conditions Friday and Saturday to parts of New South Wales, including Sydney, Canberra, and then down in towards Victoria and Tasmania. And then we're also going to be taking a look at a developing at tropical low up for Western Australia, and also a potential tropical low in the Coral Sea, so make sure you are subscribed and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Starting things off, of course, with just a current look at the weather around Australia, you can see nothing too interesting happening, but you might be able to make out this cloud over central Queensland. Now, this is associated with the trough line that's going to develop into a low pressure system in around 24 hours' time. Nothing crazy going on right now across central Queensland, apart from just a few showers here and there. But they will likely blow up into some pretty strong thunderstorms by tonight. Still, then again, nothing crazy tonight. Uh, probably nothing severe either. Just some thunder showers with some heavy rainfall and maybe one or two spots of damaging winds in there. And they'll extend across from Roma to Charleville, right up towards Mount Isa and Birdsville in Queensland's far west. Um, again, nothing crazy, but still some thunderstorms here and there which could in places deliver some heavy rainfall to some locations. Now, these thunderstorms won't be moving very far across Wednesday night into Thursday morning, but they will really strengthen by Thursday morning and become more of a solid rain band. And we're going to be seeing this very long line of moderate to heavy falls start to develop across southern Queensland into northeast and New South Wales. They should miss the Brisbane and the Gold Coast metro areas, but they'll definitely be copying northern New South Wales areas between Lightning Ridge right across towards uh, Lismore, Coffs Harbour, and Grafton and including Warren Bay as well expecting quite a bit of rainfall from Thursday morning and yeah this will just continue to grow in strength throughout Thursday and into Thursday evening as well where we will likely be seeing some severe thunderstorms here and there especially in the Queensland side of things where these ziggy marks are mainly through here towards the west of Toowoomba. I am expecting some strong thunderstorms to develop and we could be seeing one or two of these storms go severe uh, at some point Thursday evening. Rainfall accumulations shouldn't be too crazy over the next 24 hours, over the next three days actually. They should be starting to get up there towards the 100 to 150 millimetre mark and it is going to be by Friday when we really start to see rainfall accumulations uh, skyrocket but Queensland isn't expecting the worst of the rainfall. 50 to 80 millimetres is certainly going to be a widespread total that we're going to be seeing around uh, central Queensland. But I'd be saying that the worst of the rainfall is going to be concentrated in New South Wales. And that's reciprocated against uh, the forecast models. Still playing the Eastern Rebef model run through, you can see by Friday the rainfall really starting to pick up across central New South Wales. Um, and it will intensify once again as the day goes on. And an influx of moisture in towards Friday afternoon and evening. We're bringing some strong thunderstorms ashore as well, extending right down. Down the New South Wales coastline from top right down towards the bottom towards Mallacoota in Victoria and the rainfall will be really picking up by Friday evening for areas around the Sydney area and I reckon by Friday evening there'll be up to 50 millimetres falling in the Sydney metropolitan area so road conditions will be very hazardous around Sydney by uh, 3 or 4 p.m so make sure you are taking extra caution on Friday especially in your commute home from work but also your commute towards work because those roads will be very slippery by Friday evening that's for sure with the first really significant rainfall of the season and man does it get wet Friday night I mean look at this uh, not often you see a big red band where we're seeing very heavy rainfall here up towards 40 millimeters an hour that will sustain itself for maybe three or four hours so this where we're probably going to be seeing about 150 millimeters fall for some locations uh, later on Friday evening um, and yet huge rainfall accumulations. They should be outside of the Sydney metro area for the most part, but they will be right along the Great Dividing Range down towards uh, Canberra as well and extending right towards the Victoria and New South Wales border where we will be seeing that very significant rainfall fall. Um, I'm predicting this to be a big band of yellows and oranges on the Bureau of Meteorology's radar and there will be spots of reds in here. It will be a long lasting rainfall event so some significant flash flooding is very possible um, outside of Canberra. Uh, towards communities such as Goldburn up towards Bathurst as well. Expect some pretty significant flash flooding that night um, and hopefully they do start to ease off by Saturday morning but it is going to be a very slow moving band moving south and it's not until very late on in Sunday morning, in fact in early Sunday afternoon, we start to see this rainfall ease off for good and there. 
uh, more showery sort of conditions take over. We'll just get to the thunderstorms in a second up towards Brisbane and so forth. But uh, man, that is a lot of rainfall that can be falling over the next five days, probably up towards uh, what, maybe two to 300 millimetres of rainfall falling here. That's a very, very high rainfall accumulation. And again, in these mountainous areas where the forecast models sometimes don't do as good in predicting the really big nitty gritty uh, rainfall totals that we can see just outside of Canberra, I would not be writing off a rainfall accumulation of around 400 millimetres in one or two spots outside of Batemans Bay or Jervis Bay or so forth, or even outside of Penrith as well. It looks like they're going to be copying a lot of rainfall um, up in the Blue Mountains just outside of Penrith and uh, Sydney as a whole. Again, nothing too crazy outside of New South Wales. They're really going to be the ones copping the worst of the rainfall, but there's going to be two rounds up towards um, Lismore and Byron Bay uh, from this rainfall. The first round will be, of course, as I said, on Thursday, but then again, Saturday night might see some thunderstorms there. Uh, Sunday night as well might be seeing a couple of thunderstorms here and there, but yeah, Definitely from Friday morning and into Saturday, probably an onshore flow will be driven ashore and we'll likely be seeing some very heavy rainfall fall around Brisbane and the Gold Coast. So again, something we're going to have to watch for flooding. But look at this picture right here. That is some very intense rainfall extending right down the New South Wales coastline and even inland communities into Victoria and inland New South Wales around Mildura and Griffith could be seeing some significant rainfall as well Friday night into Saturday morning. So it's going to be a case where a lot of people get a lot of rainfall here and I would say 95% of the New South Wales population expecting in excess of 10 to 15 millimetres from this event and quite a few people expecting more like 100 to 150 millimetres on this uh, certain event. Now just playing this model run through you can see it does situate itself in the Tasman Sea. It doesn't really become an east coast low but it drags up another strong cold front which will impact Tasmania. That will be a very strong cold front by the looks of things in terms of wind speeds and also in terms of rainfall. So again um, probably by around next Monday and Tuesday a strong front there and then that will move into the Tasman Sea and drag a whole bunch of showers up. We'll likely be seeing some more rainfall from that as it moves towards New Zealand. And I haven't even got to the tropics yet, but it just seems like a lot is going on across the course of this week and into next week. In terms of snowfall, some pretty good widespread snowfall totals as well have been uh, just marked on the forecast as well from that second front that will be moving through that will really drop the temperatures. Some good accumulations moving into the Kosciuszko area outside of Threadbow. The GFS also on board with some good accumulations here. The Axis G3 not so much they're liking the chances more for Tasmanian snow right now but I reckon the Eastern River and the GFS are going to nail this snowfall forecast some good snowfall accumulations 7 to 10 centimeters that's a decent dusting to start off ski season 2024 and keep in mind this is early April so 10 centimeters in early April not too bad um I reckon that we're going to have a pretty good snow season, or at least a pretty good start to snow season. But again, I'll have to take a bit more time to really make a good winter forecast at this time. Now, you can see these two low-pressure areas across the West Australian tropics and also the Northern Territory tropics right now. Well, this is really starting to bug on me because all the news agencies are calling for a, another tropical low across Western Australia. I mean, yeah, they are right. It is going to be a tropical low, but I don't see a landfall coming out of this system. And, I mean, stop talking it up like it's going to become a tropical cyclone or at least a strong tropical cyclone because this is going to be a very disorganised, messy, monsoonal sort of system that will form probably by around Friday um, and it will maybe be at its strongest Saturday and Sunday, but again, not at cyclone status. And then it weakens substantially and just meanders around until next weekend by the looks of things before it finally draws away from Australia. And then you can also see a second tropical low starting to develop across the northern regions of the Arafura Sea up in the Northern Territory. Now this has been on the forecast for the last 10 days. So again, I don't really know what to say about this system. This is most likely just gonna be a strong low pressure area that refuses to move from the monsoon. But again, it will need us to be monitoring it just to make sure that it doesn't do anything silly such as develop into a tropical cyclone. But I do not see that happening whatsoever. This system is just going to be a rain threat towards Arnhem Land and the Cape York Peninsula. It's not going to be doing anything crazy up there. Um, we should probably talk about Far North Queensland's rainfall as well. You can see that they will be receiving some pretty significant rainfall accumulations from that event, probably up towards 100 or 150 millimetres. So the rainfall doesn't look like it's done there, but it certainly is starting to wind down. Hopefully some finer days for far northern Queensland around Cairns, Townsville and up towards Cooktown over the next few days. The thunderstorms should remain offshore or very far onshore by the looks of things. And yeah, nothing serious in terms of rainfall accumulation until 
probably around, dare I say, maybe Wednesday or Thursday next week. We're into Friday next week as this tropical low brings in an onshore flow. So again, it looks like there's going to be a relatively dry seven or eight days for parts of far northern Queensland, especially around Cairns and so forth. Um, but yeah, it looks like it wets up pretty significantly towards uh, the end of next week. We could be seeing up towards 250 millimetres fall around Innisfail uh, from that rainfall event. But again, I mean, rainfall up here is starting to get pretty hit and miss at this time. And the forecast model is not at all be as well because they're struggling to really predict and nail the rainfall forecast at this time. Um, which isn't too good considering it makes my job a lot harder in terms of forecasting the weather up here. But again, it is something that you would expect to happen at this time of the season. Now, with the very slow-moving motion of the tropical low that's going to be forming up around Western Australia, I believe you're going to have to be listening for tropical low 11U. I think that's what it's going to be designated as by the Bureau of Meteorology. Rainfall accumulations are going to be skyrocketing. Up to a 1,000 millimetres of rainfall can be expected wherever this system really does decide to stall. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it's anywhere close to land at the Kimberley region of Western Australia, not expecting any rainfall or any significant rainfall, uh, which is very good news indeed. And the same thing with the Northern Territory as well. They're not expecting anything crazy, except for Cape Wessel, which is kind of the only exception at this point, up towards 300 millimetres could be expected there. But again, at the rest of Arnhem Land, maybe 10 to 15 millimetres, which will mostly fall in the form of thunderstorms. Now, tropical low 11U is what we're going to see out of this system here, and maybe tropical low 12U out of this system. Um, and that is compared to 40 tropical lows that we had in uh, some previous seasons. The Bureau of Meteorology really likes, they're very trigger happy when it comes to tropical lows, that's for sure. Uh, not trigger happy when it comes to cyclones, and I don't blame them because half the cyclones that, uh, or quote unquote cyclones that move through Australian waters, they're really a stretch to call a tropical cyclone. So I don't blame the Bureau of Meteorology for being trigger sad when it comes to cyclone activity, but it just shows you how much the wet season can fluctuate in terms of activity year on year. Yeah, even though we're meant to be in a full-blown um, La Nina by this year, and we're now in an El Nino, well, we are starting to move into a La Nina, but this El Nino is very weird, that's for sure. Um, a bunch of rainfall, but only 11 tropical lows. Typically, on a, on a very wet, wet season, you're probably looking at maybe um, 30 or 40 tropical lows, which is what we had, I believe, in 2022. But this cyclone season, very dismal in terms of activity. There really hasn't been too much to talk about. And uh, the only reason why it's felt like a relatively busy season is probably because I always talk about tropical cyclones. I know that's why I felt like it's been a busy season, but also because the systems have been relatively long lasting. I mean, we've had tropical lows last for up towards a month and their remnant energy has lasted for a month or a month and a bit in some cases. I think Jasper was kicking for around 35 days if you take its first thunderstorm to its last thunderstorm. So, I mean, yeah, some of these lows have really decided to blow up quite white nicely. Anyways, I'm really starting to waffle here about nothing interesting. I'd like to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. Um, and yeah, just a huge thank you to all the support on the channel lately. More videos to come, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.